Thanks, asking Corla. Taoiseach, uh, today the Minimum Essential Standard of Living report has been published, and it's pretty damning. It shows that social welfare is lagging behind <laughs> basic needs. Um, of all the cases they looked at, more than three quarters of them, people had an inadequate uh, income. 43% of them had a deeply inadequate income. And it found that the cost of a minimum essential standard of living, so like the very basics that you need to have like the basics of a decent life, the costs have gone up by nearly 17% since 2020. We know food has gone up by more than 20%, energy up by more than 60%. The cost of babies has gone up the most. The price of formula up 37%, the price of nappies nearly uh, doubling over that period of time. And the report says that the small increases that the government has introduced in social welfare, including the one-off payments, has not compensated for that, has not meant that people have kept step with uh, as achieving a minimum uh, essential standard of living. They find that a two-parent uh, family with two kids, one in primary school, one in secondary school, is being left 96 euros a week short of a minimum essential standard of living. This is a political choice with a 65 billion euros surplus. Will you make a different political choice in the coming budget to say that nobody will be left below this minimum needed for a decent basic quality of life? Thanks very, thanks, thanks very much um, to, to deputies for, for, for raising these issues. Look, on child homelessness, we, we have a real need to do more. Um, it's interesting the point Deputy Barrett, Boyd Barrett excuse me, made about three and four bedroom houses because there's sometimes, and I suppose this is the challenge with, with a housing crisis in general, I often meet people in my own constituency office looking for the one bed. Um, so look, I think this is, if we're being honest and truthful, this is what happens when you have a deficit of uh, social house building that we're really playing catch up. Um, on though we have now seen the largest amount of social homes provided last year since the 1970s. But I do take the point about three and four bedroom houses and I, I'll scratch the surface on that, uh, on, that, on that a little bit more. You have made the point, which I've passed on to the Department of Housing on a few times, about the when someone can access the higher rate of HAP and why they're having to wait till they're nearly at the cliff edge um, before being able to access it. Your point sounds logical uh, in, relation to, in relation to that, and I will pursue it again with the Department of Housing because I did raise it after you raised it with me here, here previously. So let me take away the, the suggestions that, that, that I accept you make in, in, in good faith. Uh, Deputy Murphy, on the, the Minimum Essential Standard of Living report published today, I, I truthfully haven't yet read it, but I will. Um, and look, we... We do want to make child poverty a priority. There's nobody in Ireland who wants to see a, a child in poverty. I don't believe there's anyone in this house, regardless of political ideology, that does too. Um, and I accept there are political choices to be made, absolutely. Um, I actually think one of the political choices to be made is universal versus targeted. Uh, and I discussed this at the Child um, Poverty and Wellbeing Summit uh, in Dublin Castle recently, because there is absolutely a benefit to doing universal things. Um, there's certain things I think we all just want to be universally provided for all children in Ireland, and I think the free school books is an example of that, the expansion of the hot school meals is an example of that. But I have to be honest, there's also a need to do more on the targeted side. Uh, and I listen to people... Um, I uh, listened to people like the Children's Rights Alliance uh, on this recently, and I think they're talking a lot of sense on it, actually. So as we approach the next budget, yes, child poverty will be a priority, uh, but I think we're going to have to make, it, make very targeted decisions in relation uh, to child poverty because we need to bring all children uh, to, to that equal starting place uh, in, in, ter in, terms, in terms of their life. So I'm proud of a number of the things the government has done in this area. I could list them, but I won't in the interest of time. Um, but I, I do think there's a need to look at more targeted measures for children in particular need uh, as well. Uh, and Deputy America's uh, point is similar um, in terms of those kind of wraparound enhanced supports that we do need uh, that we do need in communities. And I hope as we start to see the community safety partnerships develop and roll out as well, that they don't just become discussions about kind of criminal justice issues. They're not meant to be in terms of their membership because what we're trying to do here is have a conversation about what can you do to create a better, safer, in every word, in every sense of the word, excuse me, uh, community. And that's why I think it's very important that the likes of family resource centres and others are plugged into that discussion.